Welcome to Pharmacology. So in this part of the flipped classroom, we'll go through briefly about the elimination process, which is the last part of the ACME, which is again part of the pharmacokinetics. So as, as mentioned in the metabolism section, the whole purpose of the M is to make the drug more hydrophilic so they can be kicked out easier out of the body. So based on that, the main route of elimination is the Mimo route. As you can see here, this is the general structure of the nephron. So please do some basic revision on the anatomy and physiological function and processes that happens in the nephron. It really helps in the understanding of this topic. The second part, which is the biliary enterohepatic circulation, which is also really interesting and quite important as well. And then also some other routes of administration. Okay, so briefly about the elimination route. So here we look at, um, there's a few processes here. First part is under the glomerular filtration. Second part at the secretion. And third at the reabsorption. Obviously the last part is the excretion of the urine itself. So there's a few main, main concepts here. So the first part is that only free and unbound drugs can go through the glomerular filtration process. So remember when we talked about a binding of drugs with the plasma proteins, especially at the distribution section. So yes, you should remember that drugs which are bound to the plasma proteins are bigger in structures, so they, could, they cannot easily move into different sections of the body, i.e. to enter different cells and so on. So, so a similar concept applies here as well. Only free and unbound drugs, which are small enough, can actually go through the glomerular filtration process. There are several uh, specific examples of drugs which are eliminated by specific processes. So yeah, and don't forget the first part of glomerular filtration is actually a passive process. And this part, for example, for penicillin can be eliminated by an active transport system. So, and also, all these concepts are also uh, influenced by other factors such as the pH trapping, which we're really going through at the absorption class, and also about the urine flow. So, these are the text examples and explanations about the diagrams. Now, please read through them. Okay, so let's go through um, several important points in the Q&A method so that it's not boring. So, the first part, what are the factors that affect the rate of drug filtration? So actually, it's at, uh, the answer is due to the plasma binding. So it's nothing to do with the liquid solubility or the pH of the drug. Are there several types of active transport system? In general, they're divided into anion and cation. Obviously, there are more special examples there. Okay, so there are also drugs which are removed unchanged via the renal part. So as back to the basics about ADME, there are certain drugs which undergo extensive metabolism before they can be eliminated, but there are also examples of drugs which do not really undergo much metabolism, meaning the drug goes through the A, D, and directly to the E section. So what is uh, specially precautions for that? So there are several examples of these drugs, uh, such as frusamide, gentamide, and digoxin, and so on. So what are the main precautions here is, is that if the patient is having some renal diseases or there are more elderly patients with lower uh, renal, the whole process is slower and so on, or not as efficient, so this, this subgroup of patients have a higher risk of toxicity. Right? Why? Because the drugs which goes through A, D and E, E only, you can imagine that these drugs are actually applied as active drug directly, meaning it has it is not a pro drug and so on and so forth. So once being administered, the drug will be active and it'll be distributed around in the body. So if the drug if the patient is having a low elimination rate, you can imagine the concentration for the drug in the body will be higher and will stay on for a longer period of time. So if the drug is under lower, uh, sorry, a narrow therapeutic index 
for example, like uh, examples here, such as gentamicin and vancomycin and even didroxin. So you can see that this group of patients with renal diseases has a much higher chance of getting toxicity symptoms. Okay, so there are a few other drugs can actually interfere with elimination, such as probinacid. It's the most famous example because this drug actually can compete with the active excretion route of penicillin. So obviously when there's competition, it interferes with the elimination of penicillin. So there's other drugs such as uh, alkalinization of urine, such as potassium citrate. So what will happen is try to refer to the absorption lecture about the pH trapping and stuff like that. Okay, so there's another very important concept that you need to know for elimination section, is called creatinine clearance which is a, a way that you can measure and indicate how good the renal function of the patient is. You learn more about that in the clinical section. Right, and this is a very, very important way to, as an indirect indicator of how good is the glomerular filtration. Okay, so let's go to the second, which is also quite important way, which is the biliary excretion group. This one is very important. It's interesting in a way because it goes through an enterohepatic circulation. So, uh, in short, I always like to describe it as a way that it's like a mini recycling process in the body. Right, so what happens is that obviously we've got a bowel system, right, which is secreted um, and near the, the secretes along with the liver area. Right, so what happens is that you have the bowel, which is the bilirubin things like that. Okay, so what happens is that, um, right, hmm, okay, I think I need to go through the diagrams. Okay, so remember for oral administration of drugs or food, it has to be absorbed in the intestine. So again, from the intestine, it will be reabsorbed back through the hepatic portal vein into the liver, and then it should be distributed all around in the body through the blood. Right. So what happens there is that obviously with the liver section, there's one part which is the secretion of the bowel. So what happens is that these drugs, it can actually be secreted back into the intestine together with the bowel secretion system. So we can see the drug goes back into the intestine and again through the intestinal process, it can be reabsorbed again. Cool. So actually, there's a little bit of process going on here whereby, remember through the liver, it goes through the metabolism, so it goes through phase 1 and phase 2 enzymes. So after the phase 2, uh, the drug structure is conjugated, right? So this conjugated drug is, the, is the, at the form that it will be secreted back with the bowel into the intestine, right? So what happens is that you need the help of the what we call flora and fauna, i.e. the bacteria in the intestine to re-break down the conjugated drug back to its original form. Then, it's again recognized by the system and it can be absorbed easily back into the hepatic portal vein, into the liver, da 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 da. So you can see it's a turnaround circle around and round, and this is only limited to a very few examples of drugs, not all of them, right? So it goes through round and round. The main implication of this is that you increase the half life of the drug in the body. Make sense? Because it's a reabsorption and it's supposed to be excreted out, it's reabsorbed again. So it's a mini recycling process. Right, so this is a clearer diagram actually. Oops. So I just go through briefly again. So from the stomach, our administration, absorption, goes into the liver, again metabolism, phase 1, phase 2, conjugation, secreted back with the bowel system, goes in again, being deconjugated by the bacteria, enzymes, and then goes round again. Okay, so you have a reservoir of recirculation of drugs, that's about 20% of the total drugs in the body. Okay. So eventually, all of these drugs will get out through the feces. So very famous examples, and few of them are like morphine, uh, etyloestradiol, which is the hormone pill, and also rifampicin. Okay, so other routes of excretion includes breast milk. So this is quite important for pharmacists as well, just because that 
uh, even though small, the the volume which is excreted will be really tiny. But you know, as a baby, they are lighter and so on. You don't really need a high dose to to sort of toxify them or to exert an effect for this uh, of the drugs into the baby. So again, uh, if a breast, if a mom, breastfeeding mom asks you about all these things, please double check whether the drug that the person is taking is safe for breastfeeding moms, right? Safe in a way, safe for the baby. Let's say it's safe for the mom. Okay, right. So other excretion routes. So um, just a little bit of it. Mainly, for example, for lung, is the elimination of anesthetic gases. Obviously, when it's inhaled in a way. So there's a few other mini routes in a way like saliva, sweat, and tears. Quantitatively, they are not very important, but um, it's very important for other sections such as for forensic or for diagnosis purposes, right? So yeah, it's a potential clinical detection. So again, these few routes depends on the diffusion of the uh, lipid form of the drugs through the glands and so on. Okay, that's all for the elimination process. Happy revising. Ta!